This is amazing. Now we have Llama Agents. So what is Llama Agents? It's a multi-agents framework released by Llama Index. So if you don't know about Llama Index, it can turn your enterprise data into a production ready LLM application, which means it will take care of logging, indexing, querying, evaluating. If you don't know any of this, I've already covered in a separate video about Llama Index. I will link that in the description below. So what is different about Llama Agents? It's AI Agents as a Service, which means each individual agent will act as a service and it will run in separate URL. Imagine you have two agents. Agent number one have access to secret information. Agent number two can create fun fact. But in the current scenario, all these agents exist for a second and disappear. But what if you want to persist these agents? That means what if you want to host these agents in a server and access these agents whenever required? That's when we try to convert these agents as service. So this Llama Agents Framework make things easier for you. So as an example, if you run this, you can see the first agent that is a secret fact agent is running in localhost 8000. Then the fun fact agent is running in port number 8002. And we are able to monitor all these agents in this dashboard like this. So you can even define a task. Give me the secret information and that will be created as a task. Then it will be passed to relevant agents. And finally you get an output. The secret fact is a baby llama is called Kriya. That's exactly what we're going to see today. Let's get started. Hi everyone, I'm really excited to show you about AI agents as a service using llama agents. I will also try to compare this with other agent frameworks such as Crew AI and Autogen. So here is the difference between other frameworks. Llama agents is an async first framework for building, iterating and productionizing multi-agent systems. So what is async? That means you can keep on executing tasks even without waiting for other agents to complete the task. In this way, you are able to speed up the process. For example, if you have the same task for multiple agents at the same time, you can do that, which means you are saving time. So here is a simple example. So when the user asks a question, then it goes to the control plane. So for other frameworks, it's called the manager LLM or the supervisor large language model, which means this is the main large language model, which is going to delegate tasks to other agents. Here it is called as control plane, where you got the orchestrator decides what happens next. So even in Autogen, we have the similar kind of setup. And even for crew AI, we have the similar setup and we have service metadata information about the different service available. That is different agent services. And we have a message queue. So whenever a message is sent, it goes to the message queue, which means even if you have multiple queries coming in, it is able to handle and send it to respective agents. So you won't have this queuing system for crew AI or Autogen. So this message queuing system is required if you run anything as a service. If you've got experience running microservice, you know about message queuing. So that is one of the required thing if you want to load balance. The ultimate goal for these agents as service is to host this in a cloud environment, such as Google Cloud, AWS, Azure, or the cloud provider of your choice. So when a user make a request via API, it could be tons of requests and the requests don't need to be sent to all these agents every time. So it can go to one individual agent multiple times if the task is same. For example, the agent number one is expert in math, agent number two, expert in science. So whenever a user requests a question about math, it could be 10 questions at a time. So it can directly use the agent service number one rather than disturbing other agent services. And you can create a mobile application or desktop application and you can access the same way you access an API. Now I'm going to take you through step by step how you can create this in code, the different setup available, and finally how you can set up a user interface like this, which is inbuilt capable of monitoring these agents. But before that, I regularly create videos in regards to artificial intelligence on my YouTube channel. So do subscribe and click the bell icon to stay tuned. Make sure you click the like button so this video can be helpful for many others like you. So first step, pip install Llama Agents, Llama Index Agent OpenAI, Llama Index Embeddings OpenAI, Llama Index Program OpenAI. So in this mostly we are focusing on OpenAI ChatGPT. So after this, I'm going to click enter and it's installing all the packages. Next. Let's export the OpenAI API key like this and then click enter. 
This you can generate from OpenAI website to access ChatGPT. Next, let's create a file called app.py and let's open it. So first step, from Longma agents, import, agent service, agent orchestrator, control plane server, local launcher, and simple message queue. So the main thing to note is what we saw before, the orchestrator, the agent service, message queue. So we got the orchestrator here, the service here, message queue here, the control plane, and additionally, we'll have the local launcher to run this. Next step, from Llama index core agent, import function calling agent worker. This I'm importing to add a tool to those agent. Next is function tool and then open AI. So these are the steps which we are going to cover. First, we are going to create a tool, then we are going to create agents, then assign that tool to the agent, then we are going to create components to put all these things together and finally Llama kickoff. So first step, creating the tool. So we are going to create a function called get the secret fact. It returns the secret fact. And the secret fact is a baby Llama is called Kriya. So this could be your own application or own API. You can integrate that here. I've already covered how to integrate DuckDuckGo search in this type of function. So we can integrate anything here. So after this, we need to create tool. So function tool from defaults and assigning that function here. So step number two is to create agents. So we're going to create two agents. One is the secret info agent and another one is the fun fact agent. Then we are going to assign a manager to this agent. That is the orchestrator. So creating agent step number two. First worker number one, function calling agent worker from tools. Here we are assigning the tool which we have just created. That is the get the secret fact tool and we are assigning the large language model that is OpenAI. By default, it uses GPT-4. Then creating the second agent, worker two, and we are not assigning any tool to that agent. Now, agent one, worker one as agent, and worker two as agent. It's just to initiate those functions. Next, step number three is create components, create key components. So first, we are defining the simple message queue. Next, control plane server. Here, we are mentioning the message queue, and the manager LLM, that is the orchestrator, and we are assigning OpenAI. Next, we are creating agent service. So agent server number one, and we are assigning that first agent with the message queue, useful for getting the secret fact. And the service name is secret fact agent. So this is agent as a service. So we are going to convert the agents which we created before and giving the ability to be hosted as a service. Next, agent number two, same as before, we got the agent two message queue, useful for getting random dumb facts, dumb fact agent. So two service for agents. And the final step is Llama kickoff. So I named this as kickoff, but it's just to give you an understanding that it's same as crew a kickoff. So here we are giving those two agents, the control plane and the message queue. That's it. Putting all these things together, then result equals launcher dot launch single what is the secret fact? So here we are providing a task or giving a task and finally printing the result. So as a quick overview, first we created a tool, assigned that tool to those agent, then created the key components, such as the message queue, control plane to agent service. And finally, Llama kickoff. Now I'm going to run this code. In your terminal, Python app and then click enter. Now you can see it's running, going through the list of agents. First, it went to the control plane, then secret fact agent, and finally, we get the response here. The result, the secret fact is that the baby llama is called Kriya. So you might ask, this is same as crew AI. What is the difference? So the key difference comes when you host this as a service. So how we can host this as a service? Slightly modifying the code, added this control plane server, server launcher, the human service and callable message customer. So when you come to the code, it's same as before, the same control plane with agent service, but the difference comes here. So here we are providing the host and the port number for agent number one server. For agent number two server, again we are providing the host and the port number. Again we are providing the human service, there we are providing the host and the port number. So human service is another way to bring human in the loop. And then we have the callable message customer. This allows human in the loop and assigning that to this function. Finally, server launcher and providing all these agents and human service with the control plane, message queue, and the human customer. So the main difference is that providing the host and the port number and adding the human in the loop service. 
all other things remains the same. And finally, we are launching the server. Now I'm going to run this Python server.py. And here you can see it's automatically loading individual agents as service. In this URL, we got the control plane. In this URL, we got the secret fact agent. And in this URL, we got the dumb fact agent. We can also see the same here in the code, port 8002-8003, as you can see here. The human service is in this URL. So by hosting this, you are able to directly call this agents via this URL. And we have a monitoring service. For that, I'm opening a new terminal. In that, I'm going to type llama agents monitor and providing the control plane URL and then click enter. This will automatically open this monitor where you can see the list of agents. That is a secret fact agent, dumb fact agent, default human service. So if I ask what is a secret fact, then it's going to use the secret fact agent, created the job, and you can see the user asked, that is me asking what is a secret fact, and the content from the tool used is this, that is the context. And based on that, we got the final answer. The secret fact is a baby llama is called Kriya. And it's quite interesting that this UI is running on my terminal, VS Code. Now I need to show the different process such as sequential process and hierarchical process. Sequential means you go one by one. So go to the first agent, then go to the second agent, and finally you give the overall output. But if it's hierarchical, the first main manager agent will control the lower agent, and then the response will be returned back. Then again, there is a decision. Then again, if required, it can go back to the same agent again. Then similarly, it can work with the other agent as well, based on their skill. So how we can interpret that in this instant, that is Llama agents. So Llama agents contain something called pipeline orchestrator. So using this, same as before, the all other code remains the same, mostly, but the main difference comes in pipeline. So here we are providing the chain and we are mentioning the agent component one, that is nothing but agent server one. And similarly, agent component two, that is agent server two. So two different agent service, and we are providing that as a pipeline. So when we run this, automatically it goes to the first component and it goes to the second component. That is the first agent and then to the second agent. And finally, we'll get the result. Now I'm going to run this in your terminal, Python pipeline.py. And here you can see the answer. Did you know that llamas can hum a tune just like humans? That is a dumb fact by one of the agents. Then the secret fact is baby llama is called Kriya. So that is sequential process. Now we need to see hierarchical. To do that, we are still using pipeline. As you can see here, pipeline orchestrator. We are converting agent one as a tool. So we got the agent one here, same as before, secret fact agent. So this agent, we are converting it to tool with this agent service tool function. Then that tool is assigned to agent two. Then we create agent service and all the remaining things same as before. So rather than two agents in line, we have the main agent that is agent two accessing agent one in the form of a tool and the response is returned back to the main agent. So that's what's happening here. So agent two is having access to agent one using tools. That's it. Now I'm going to run this Python pipeline agent as tool. And here you can see, here's a secret fact that is using the agent one. A baby llama is called Kriya. Then that information is sent to agent two and agent two is specialized in providing dumb facts. And we got the dumb fact here. That's it. I know these are very simple examples, but just to explain the point, but you can extend this further. And final, final thing I wanna show you is human in the loop. So how can you achieve that? So I didn't mention about human services before. So same as before, we are mentioning that human component in the components here. So we have a main component called router component. There we are providing choices. That's where we provide the agent and the human service. And finally, we provide the component that is agent component and human component. That's the key difference. I will put all the information on the code in the description below. Now we are going to run this Python human in the loop. And now you can see your assistant is needed. Please respond to the request provided. So now there is a question and I need to provide the answer. So the answer is 15 and then it's acknowledging the result. So as you can see here, the human service is capable of answering queries about math. That's why the question was asked back to me. So here is a question which was initiated. Similarly, you can extend your application to make sure human is in the loop. I'm really excited about this. I'm going to create more videos similar to this, so stay tuned.
I hope you like this video. Do like, share, and subscribe. And thanks for watching.